In this lecture, we'll talk about trigonometric functions of general angles. So to start with, let's let theta be any angle in standard position, and let AB denote coordinates of a point on the terminal side of the angle. If R is defined to be the square root of A squared plus B squared, and is the distance from AB to zero, then we can define our trig functions as follows. Sine of theta will equal B over R, cosine of theta will equal A over R, tangent of theta will equal b over a, cosecant of theta will equal r over b, secant of theta will equal r over a, and cotangent of theta will equal a over b. So essentially what's going on here is that we can reduce our problem and solve it using the triangle trigonometry that we've talked about previously. So let's look at an example. We want to find the trigonometric function values if the point 2, negative 2 is on the terminal side of an angle. So if we sketch out this angle with the initial side on the x-axis and the terminal side going to the point 2, negative 2, we can see that it makes a right triangle with a horizontal leg of 2, a vertical leg of negative 2, and a hypotenuse that we don't know. So to find the hypotenuse, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So it'll tell us that r will equal the square root of a squared plus b squared. If we plug in the values of our legs, 2 and negative 2, we'll get r equals the square root of 2 squared plus a negative 2 squared. 2 squared and negative 2 squared are both 4, so we have the square root of 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8. And we can factor 8 to be 4 times 2, and then bring the 4 outside of the square root sign, so this simplifies to be 2 times the square root of 2. So now that we know all three sides of the corresponding triangle, we can put together our trig function values. So we think of sine of theta, remember sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be negative 2 divided by 2 square root of 2. The 2's will cancel out giving us a negative 1 over the square root of 2. And if we rationalize the denominator that will give us ne negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse which will be 2 over 2 root 2. Again the 2's cancel out giving us 1 over the square root of 2. And if we rationalize the denominator that will give us root 2 over 2. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be negative 2 over 2, which simplifies to give us negative 1. Cosecant of theta is going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so that's 2 root 2 divided by negative 2. The 2's will cancel out, giving us a negative square root of 2. Secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's 2 root 2 over positive 2. Again, the 2's cancel out, just leaving us with square root of 2. And finally, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, so that'll be 2 divided by negative 2, which again gives us a negative 1. Let's look at another example. This time we want to find the trigonometric function values if the point negative 1, negative 2 is on the terminal side of the angle. So the terminal side of the angle, which contains the point negative 1, negative 2, will form the following triangle with the x-axis. We have a horizontal leg of negative 1, a vertical leg of negative 2, and we need to find the hypotenuse. So again, we'll say r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. We plug in the values of our legs, so r equals the square root of 1 squared plus a negative 2 squared. 1 squared is 1, and negative 2 squared is 4, so r is the square root of 1 plus 4, which will be the square root of 5. So now that we know that all three sides of this triangle, we can use them to find the trigonometric function values of the angle. We'll start with sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So that'll be negative 2 divided by the square root of 5. If we rationalize the denominator, that'll give us negative 2 root 5 over 5. Next, we have cosine of theta. That's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1, negative 1 over the square root of 5. And again, we rationalize the denominator, gives us negative root 5 over 5. If we look at tangent of theta, that'll be opposite over adjacent, so that's negative 2 divided by negative 1, which gives us a positive 2. Next we have cosecant of theta, which is going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so that's the square root of 5 over negative 2, which will just be negative root 5 over 2. Secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's root 5 divided by negative 1, which will be a negative root 5. And finally, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, so that will be negative 1 divided by negative 2, which simplifies to give us a positive 1 half. All right, next let's talk about using coterminal angles to find the values of the trigonometric functions. 
So by definition, any two or more angles that are in standard position are going to be coterminal if they have the same terminal side. So for example, let's consider this angle that's in standard position. We could create this angle by starting with our initial ray and rotating the terminal ray counterclockwise until we get to it, and that would be a positive angle that we could call A. But we could also create this angle by starting with our initial side, rotating it clockwise until we get to the terminal side, and that could give us a negative angle, which we'll call B. Another way that we could get this is to start with our initial angle, rotate around the set of axes one complete revolution, and then continue until we get to the terminal side. This is illustrated by the purple spiral, and that would be called a positive angle C. So all three of these angles have the same terminal side even though we get to it in a different way. So angles A, B, and C are all said to be coterminal. Okay, so to find coterminal angles, we're going to take the following approach. If we're dealing with angles in degrees, we're going to add or subtract 360 degrees. So that's the amount of one revolution. If we're working in radians, we will add or subtract 2 pi, which again represents one revolution. So since coterminal angles have the same terminal side, they're also going to have the same trig function values. So sine of theta plus 360 times k, so any number of revolutions around the, ax around the coordinate axes, is going to equal just sine of theta. And in radians, sine of theta plus 2 pi k, so theta and all of its coterminal angles, will just equal the sine of theta. All right, so to evaluate the trig function values using coterminal angles, or to evaluate the trig function value of an angle that is outside of the range from 0 to 360 degrees, or 0 to 2 pi if we're working in radians, what we're going to do is add or subtract the appropriate value until you get yourself to be within that range of 0 to 360, or 0 to 2 pi, and then evaluate the trig function for the coterminal angle that you found. So let's do a few examples. We want to use the coterminal angle to find the trig function values for the following. First, we want to look at the sine of 390 degrees. Now, since 390 degrees is greater than 360, we want to find the coterminal angle that's between 0 and 360, and we'll find that by subtracting 360. So our coterminal angle will be 390 minus 360, which is 30, so we have a 30 degree coterminal angle. So that means that the sine of 390 degrees will be the same as the sine of 30 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so the sine of 390 degrees will be 1 half. Next, let's consider the sine of 9 pi over 4. So this time we're working in radians, and 9 pi over 4 is greater than our 0 to 2 pi range, so we need to subtract 2 pi until we get within that range. So 9 pi over 4 minus 2 pi. So in order to complete that subtraction, we need to have a common denominator. So we'll rewrite 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. And 9 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4 just gives us pi over 4. So that's going to be our coterminal angle. So that means that the sine of 9 pi over 4 will equal the sine of pi over 4, which we know is the square root of 2 over 2. So the sine of 9 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Finally, we want to find the tangent of negative 300 degrees. So this one's a little bit different. Negative 300 is less than our range from 0 to 360. So this time we're going to add 360 in order to get within the range. So our coterminal angle will be negative 300 degrees plus 360 degrees, and that gives us 60 degrees. So that means that the tangent of negative 300 will be the same as the tangent of 60 degrees, and the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. So that means the tangent of negative 300 degrees will be the square root of 3. So the next thing we want to talk about are the signs of the trigonometric function values by quadrant based on the quadrant in which the terminal side lies. So remember, if you look at the coordinate axes split by the x and y axes, the upper right-hand corner is quadrant 1, and then going counterclockwise from that, we have quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So a way to remember the signs of the trig functions in each quadrant is to remember the following acronym. All students take calculus. So the A for all means that all of the functions are going to be positive in quadrant one. 
the S for students means that only the sine, tr sine function will be positive in quadrant two and its reciprocal function cosecant. So sine and cosecant will be the only positive trigonometric functions in quadrant two. The T for take represents the tangent function and its cofunction cotangent. So tangent and cotangent are the only positive trig functions in quadrant three. And the C for calculus represents the cosine function and its reciprocal function secant will be the only two functions that are positive in quadrant four. All right, so the next thing that we want to talk about is finding the reference angles for general angles. So let's let theta denote an angle that lies in a quadrant. Then the acute angle that is formed by the terminal side of angle theta and the x-axis is called the reference angle. So basically we subtract the angle and the x-axis to find out a reference angle that would lie in quadrant one. So for example, let's find the reference angle for 300 degrees. So if I start with my coordinate axis, I know a 300 degree angle is going to go, going to be rotated around from the positive x-axis down into quadrant four. And it'll look like this. So this is my 300 degree angle. And so the angle that that makes with the x-axis is going to be my reference angle. So my reference angle is denoted by the double green arcs. So I want to find out the value of that. So remember the positive x-axis is 360 degrees and my angle is 300 degrees. So if I want to find the difference between the x-axis and where my angle is, I'm going to do subtraction. So we'll subtract 360 minus 300 and that'll give us a reference angle of 60 degrees. So 60 degrees will be the reference angle for 300 degrees. Let's look at some more examples. So this time let's find the reference angle for five pi over six. We'll start by sketching the angle five pi over six and we see that it goes not quite to the left hand side of the x axis. So we want to find the reference angle and that's going to be the angle that goes between the terminal side and the left hand side of the x axis which is denoted by the double green arc here. So if we want to find the measure of that reference angle we need to take the left hand side of the x axis which is represented by the angle pi and subtract our angle five pi over six. So our reference angle will be pi minus five pi over six. In order to do that subtraction we need a common denominator so we'll write pi as six pi over six. So we have six pi over six minus five pi over six and that yields a reference angle of just pi over six. And for one last example, we want to find the reference angle for 490 degrees. Now note 490 degrees is higher than our range from zero to 360. So the first thing we want to do is find a coterminal angle. And then we'll use that to find our reference angle. So we start by finding the coterminal angle. We take 490 degrees and subtract 360, which gives us a 130 degree coterminal angle. If we sketch out that 130 degree angle, we'll see that it goes just past the upper part of the y axis. And so we want to find the reference angle that goes between that terminal side and the x axis. So since the left hand side of the x axis is represented by 180 degrees and our angle doesn't quite go that far, we're going to subtract 180 minus our angle of 130 to give us a reference angle of 50 degrees. So now that we know how to find reference angles, we can use the reference angles to find trig function values. So the procedure that we want to use to find a trig function value using reference angles is first find out what the reference angle is. Then find the value of the trig function for that reference angle. And then adjust the sign according to the quadrant of our original angle. So for example, let's find the cosine of 600 degrees. Since 600 is higher than 360 degrees, we'll start by finding the coterminal angle. So 600 minus 360 gives us a coterminal angle of 240 degrees. So if we sketch out the 240 degree angle, we'll see that it lies down in the third quadrant, somewhere between the left hand side of the x axis and the lower part of the y axis. So we want to find the reference angle. That's the angle between our terminal side and the left hand side of the x axis. So to find our reference angle value, we take our angle 240 degrees and we'll subtract the angle from the x-axis, that's 180. So 240 minus 180 is 60 degrees. And 60 degrees is one of those special angles that we should know all of the trig functions for. 
So the cosine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. That means that our angle, cosine of 600 degrees, will have the same value. But since cosine is negative in the third quadrant, we'll put a negative sign in front, giving us the cosine of 600 degrees equals negative square root of 3 over 2. So for our next example, we want to find the tangent of 225. So let's start by sketching out the 225 degree angle. That'll be just a little bit past the left-hand side of the x-axis, in between the x-axis and the y-axis. And we want to find the reference angle that's the difference between the terminal side and the left-hand side of the x-axis. So to find our reference angle, we'll take our angle 225 and we'll subtract 180 degrees, which gives us a reference angle of 45 degrees. So again, 45 degrees is one of those special angles that we should know most of our trig functions for. So the tangent of 45 degrees we'll find is equal to 1, and we just need to adjust the sign. So tangent of 225 degrees will take that same value of 1, and in the third quadrant we know that tangent is positive, so it will still just be a positive 1. So we'll get the tangent of 225 degrees is equal to positive 1. In the last part of this lecture, we want to find trig function values if we're given a trig function value. And so again, we can choose whether we want to use a reference triangle or trig identities. And after we find the values, we need to make sure that the signs match with the quadrant that was given to us. So for this example, we want to find all trig function values for an angle in the third quadrant if we know that sine of theta equals negative two-thirds. So since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I'm going to sketch out a triangle that has opposite side of 2 and hypotenuse of 3. Now I know that the sine of theta was given to us to be negative 2 thirds, but we're just going to work with the positive values to make it a little bit easier to deal with, and then we'll adjust the signs when we're finished to match up with the quadrant that we're in. So look at, let's look at this triangle that has an opposite side of 2 and a hypotenuse of 3. So the first thing we want to do before we can find our trig function values is find the third side. So we use the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We'll plug in what we know, so 3 squared equals 2 squared plus b squared. If we simplify that, we'll get 9 equals 4 plus b squared. Subtract 4 from both sides gives us 5 equals b squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we'll see that our third leg is going to be the square root of 5. So now that we know all three sides of the triangle, we can start finding our trig function values, keeping in mind that we need to adjust the sign to match up the fact that we're in the third quadrant. So we'll start with sine of theta. We know that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and we also know that sine is negative in the third quadrant, so that'll give us a value of negative two-thirds. Next, we'll look at cosine of theta. We know that that's adjacent over hypotenuse, and cosine is also negative in the third quadrant, so when we put all that together, we get negative square root of 5 over 3. Tangent is opposite over adjacent and is positive in the third quadrant. So we have 2 divided by the square root of 5. And if we rationalize the denominator, that'll give us 2 root 5 over 5. Cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse over the opposite and is negative in the third quadrant, which will give us negative 3 halves. Secant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent and is also negative in the third quadrant. So that'll give us negative 3 divided by the square root of 5. And if we rationalize our denominator, that'll give us negative 3 root 5 over 5. And finally, cotangent of theta is equal to the adjacent over the opposite and is positive in the third quadrant. So we'll have a cotangent value of root 5 over 2.